Howdy. This is going to be a nice, simple, quick video. I promise it's going to be nice and quick. I'm not going to go into a huge rant where I quote three whole chapters of the Bible like the last time I did one of these videos. This one will be nice and simple. This is from a Catholic Instagram page, which states, When I ask a Protestant person to show me in the Bible where it says we are saved by grace alone through faith alone. Here we go. Tell me what you're trying. Let's do this right here. <laughs> I, I, I had to do it. Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the, of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us who lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. He goes on to repeat that. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Galatians 3, 1 through 6, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish after beginning by means of the Spirit? Are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Have you experienced so much in vain if it really was in vain? So again I ask, does God give you His Spirit and work miracles among you by the works of the law or by you believing what you heard? So also Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And Romans 4 5 through 12, however, to the one who does not work but trusts God who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness. David says the same thing when he speaks of the blessedness of the one to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin is in, uh, whose sin the Lord will never count against them. Is this blessedness only for the circumcised or also for the, uh, for the uncircumcised? We have been saying that Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness. Under what circumstances was it credited? Was it after he was circumcised or before? It was not after, but before. And he received circumcision as a sign, a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith, while he was still uncircumcised. So then he is the father of all who believe but have not been circumcised in order that unright in order that righteousness might be credited to them. And he is then also the father of the circumcised who not only are circumcised, but who also follow in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. Every single one of those scriptures makes it very plain and clear that we are not saved by any works or by any traditions or by any praying of the rosaries or by going to freaking purgatory or by praying to any of the saints or by going to mass or by getting baptized. We're not saved through any of those actions. We are saved because God graciously gives us faith, not of our own will or ability to choose to do so, because we were dead in our transgressions, as is in the first verse of Ephesians 2. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. And later on it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and it is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Yes, we have to do things afterwards. Okay? No 
self-respecting Christian is going to claim that you can just claim that you believe and then experience no spiritual fruit. Spiritual fruit, though, is not salvation. It is evidence of salvation. The fruit of the Spirit, which are the characteristics that Christians embody once they are saved, and the profession of their faith are signs that they have faith and that they are saved, not the things that actually offer them salvation. So no, you don't need to be baptized to be saved. You don't need to partake in communion to be saved. That's evident as is clearly portrayed from the thief on the cross. All that is required to be saved is to put your faith in Jesus. However, if you do love Jesus, you will do as he commands. And evidence of your love for Christ and evidence of your salvation will be made fruitful And it will be made evident through the doing of what Christ commands. Going out into all the world, making disciples, obeying the law, and repenting of your sins. That does not give you salvation. That is evidence of salvation. If you want more context and a longer series of verses that talks about faith and how it is by faith that people were saved, and how by faith they were given the ability to do things by God, go read all of Hebrews 11. And if you ever get hung up on the fact that the Bible doesn't specifically say alone, as in by grace alone, through faith alone, in Scripture, you really don't want to play that game because there's nothing in the Bible that talks about purgatory. There's nothing in the Bible that suggests that Jesus Christ told his disciples to literally eat his blood and his literal to literally eat his literal flesh and his literal blood for drink. There's nothing in the Bible that says you should pray to Mary. And there's nothing in the Bible that says you should pray to dead saints. In fact, it condemns that when Samuel is brought back from the dead in terms of a spiritual séance and he tells the person who asked him to bring him back that he is cursed because he has disturbed the dead. So no, the Bible does not call for such ugly, disturbing, gross Catholic traditions or Orthodox traditions or traditions in general. And to take out of context the verse that says, hold fast to the traditions which you were taught, No, that is not stating that those traditions offer salvation. Those traditions that they were talking about were the reading of God's word, the teaching of Christ, believing in the Son, remembering Christ through communion, adhering to the fruit of the Spirit. Those are the traditions. Traditions do not offer salvation. Traditions merely are an example of your your thankfulness to the Lord for saving you. They are evidence of saving grace. They are evidence of salvation. That is all traditions are good for. Traditions do not offer salvation. And too often the claim from too many people in works-based faith comes from the fact they think that they can be good enough to get salvation from God and their own works. Completely ignoring the fact that it is by grace and faith alone that you are given the ability to understand the gospel in the first place. So no, works do not offer salvation. Works are an evidence of salvation, but they are not what gives you salvation. Not by a long shot. Because no dead man can make himself alive through works. That's impossible. And it's a disgusting, heretical ideology that needs to be talked down, needs to be completely destroyed because it is ugly and it takes away from the glory of Christ. It is by grace alone, through faith alone, because of Christ alone that we are saved. What Christ did on the cross and what happened afterwards. The core of our faith is who Christ was, what he did, and why it matters. That's the core of our faith. 
and to make any claims other than that. And in fact, to have the gall to say that you truly believe in Christ alone. When there's so much idolatry, so much imagery that you pray to, which the Bible directly calls you to stop doing, the Bible directly condemns, so make no graven image, that you use graven images and idols to pray. That's evil. That's the exact opposite of what the Bible calls to do. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get this angry. I get heated when I hear heresy. I get heated when people take the Bible and twist it for their own specific purposes. And much more so, I hate it when people teach others these heresies. So go read the Bible. Please go read the Bible and read it in context. Take everything in context with the understanding that at the center of it is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Have a great day and a great rest of the week.